I just seen Mr. Bit's video called Rent and Senseless Multitasking. And I just wanted to make a response to that. Uh, now, I'm not claiming to know more than Mr. Bit. Heaven knows that I'm far from that mountaintop, okay? So I'm not claiming to come on here and say, Mr. Bit, you're fucking wrong. Because, you know, I can't say that because I am not as knowledgeable as Mr. Bit is about a lot of these things. So, having said that, let me move on and give my impressions, okay? Um, now, I left a comment in Mr. Bid, Mr. Bit's video saying that he said that, you know, why not optimize your hardware? And I contend and argue that overclocking is not necessarily optimizing your hardware, okay? Maybe it can be in certain sit situations, but in general, you can't really call overclocking an optimization because if overclocking was optimal more OEMs would do it it might be optimal for a certain single or class of user but it is not the overall optimal thing I mean I can't say hey I bored my car out to, to 60 over so I've optimized it or I put a supercharger on my car so I've optimized it no I've made it faster I haven't necessarily optimized it. Um, I mean, I contend that there's a difference between making something faster and better and optimization. Um, I mean, you can get power through the brute force method also. Or you can optimize in the sense that I'm thinking. Like, make everything work great together and just optimize what you got. So, although I'm not saying he's not completely wrong on that, I still contend that it's mainly just a hobby, the overclocking scene. I mean, if it was really optimal, more big facilities would do it, but it's not optimal for them to overclock all their machines, so they don't do it. So, on his, in, in one end, I can see how he can say it is optimal, but on the other end, I can see how it can be considered not optimizing your hardware. Um, he, he, want, he, tries to, well, he says that, you know, we shouldn't really get too much into multitasking and stuff, but w w people need to understand... This is our cars. These are our race cars. This is how we compete. This is how we have fun. And we have to have a practical demonstration of how to do that with one another. And all the time, sometimes these little tests might be senseless, quote unquote, or dumb, or not really accurate about finding out what machine is truly more powerful. But we do the best with what we got, and we like to compete, and we like to have, like I said, a practical demonstration of that competition. And when I can run 25... HD videos with a QuickTime player, and my buddy who has a PC can only run 15, you know, in the long sense of things, maybe it don't actually mean anything, but to us, practical, average desktop users, that says a lot. That says a lot, and, I, and it has been the case that I have been able to run more movies than a certain person, or a certain person's been able to run more than me, and you know, that is a, a performance discrepancy, and those little discrepancies, no matter how inaccurate, are all that we've got here on YouTube, so that's what we have to play by. Um, let me see, I've had some notes wrote down here I'm trying to look at. Um, he said something about we're trying to hold on to an idea, but in my opinion, Mr. Bit and some others are holding on to the idea that overclocking is optimizing it and overclocking is better because you're getting more out of your hardware. That is an idea, and my idea is it's not. My idea is it can be, but I don't think it's something that should be recommended. I think it's for the enthusiast, for the hobbyist, for the guy who wants to squeeze every little bit because once you get to a certain clock speed, you're not going to be able to overclock it. You're going to need ungodly amounts of cooling or it just ain't going to work. And when you get to that point, how do you optimize something? Add more cores. So multi-cores could be considered opt optimization as well as overclocking. I myself would rather have more cores than less cores at a higher clock speed. That's me. Because I use a lot of multi-threaded apps. I use a lot of apps that would take advantage of that. Well, not a lot, but apps like, you know... After Effects and 3D applications and render applications and video encoding applications, compressor is, it uses, man, it uses all my, I mean, I use apps like that. So when it comes to somebody like me, this kind of thing makes a big difference. Um, in my opinion, he talks about optimization, and I think Apples are optimized with their hardware and software. I think that's the advantage we have over PC users who just build or OEMs. Most people don't optimize because most people are not on Mr. Bit's level. They don't know, you know. 
And I don't agree that BIOS failed due to politics. I don't. I don't agree with that. If that's what. He, if that was is what he was trying to convey. Um, so let's see what else I got down here. Um, he said he didn't need an eight core, and that's fine. But I don't want anybody to tell me an eight core isn't needed because I have seen instances where this eight cores with eight virtual cores, meaning sixteen overall, has helped and. Um, it would help more for somebody to have something like that than an overclocked processor. And I've seen where an overclocked processor will do better than multi-cores. And generally, a higher clocked processor with less cores does gaming better than a lower clocked processor with many cores because games don't really take advantage of all those cores. So it really depends on what we're doing. But like Mr. Bit said, it's all relative, but we have to find a common ground so we can compete with one another, have fun, and, and, and do these kind of things. I mean... I agree with a lot of what he said, but I still am on the contention and the belief that custom builds and overclocking is more of a hobby. Not all the time now, not all the time. Most of the time, it's a hobby. Most of the time, it ain't needed. And if you're looking for the best optimal setup that the average non-educated user can get, you're looking at an OEM. Okay, so it's, that's why it's hard for me to recommend any kind of overclocking or custom machine to anybody who doesn't know more than the average person. I think overclock, I haven't seen any custom machines really impress me yet. I haven't seen any custom machines that really impress me like my Mac Pro have, and I've seen a lot of custom machines. Now, and that's just my opinion. I think custom building is kind of a scam for most people. Um, I think a lot of people go into custom builds thinking they're gonna get something cheaper they're not doing it so they can optimize anything or get anything faster. They're doing it for the price. And I think that's a trap a lot of people fall into. Hey, I can get a better computer for a cheaper price. And that's not necessarily the case because you custom build. You might get a better price, but you might not know enough to get your hardware and your software optimized and build a good machine. And you might end up with a system that's not going to last you. Or just isn't as compatible as what it would be if you'd known what you was doing. There's a lot of factors involved. That's why I say custom machines are kind of a niche market and OEM is the best route to go. But I do agree with Mr. Bit on one thing. You cannot compare a custom build to an OEM machine. You cannot do that. They're two totally separate things. So um, there's my take on, on his video. And if you look here, if you notice, look at Apple's stock. Boy, it's, it is sold and it has blew past everybody's expectations. If they're expecting it to be over $200 a share. Uh, Apple's gross margin, the percentage of sales remaining after taking out production cost, was 36.6%, up from 34. Um, there's so much here I can read, but I don't think I have time. There are now more than 85,000 programs available in the App Store. The success of the App Store creates a virtuo the virtuose circle of buyers and developers that will be difficult for Apple's smartphone rivals to match. I mean, they're pretty much to the point now to where they've pulled away from people and there's nothing nobody's going to be able to do. Apple now has the highest market share in computers since Jobs returned as Apple's CEO in 1997. It has its highest market share it's ever had. Uh, the max share of US PC sales rose from 9.4% in the third quarter from 8.6% a year earlier, placing Apple fourth in the market according to research firms. Wow, Apple is just, even during the economic downturn, Apple is booming. So there you go. Even though Barack Obama's fucking is over, Apple still succeeds. So we'll see you next time, guys. OS 10.